what happened? What's going? <gasps> Program rebooting. Initiating will at cannon in five, four, three. What is happening? Two, what is happening? Will it cannon? That is the question. Hello, Watchtower Database, and welcome back to another Will It Cannon episode, the show where we take a look at a piece of DC Comics multimedia to see if it fits into Bruce Tim and Co.'s DC Animated Universe. Yes, it's finally time to talk about Teen Titans. Skip that one for a minute. Right. The Fatal Five movie just came out. Network series. Teen Titans. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> Teen Titans debuted on July 19th, 2003, and was created by Glenn Murakami, an animation director and producer who had previously worked on and heavily influenced the visual style of Batman Beyond, and served as art director for Superman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. The Teen Titans show was also executive produced by JLU-attached Sam Register, and composed by the dynamic music partners Lolita Ritmanis, Michael McQuistion, and Christopher Carter, who had by this point established themselves as the go-to DC Animated Universe songsmiths. So with all these backstage DCAU connections, it's easy to see why something like this pop-up video style piece of trivia slipped by the editors, listing Teen Titans as a part of the same DC Animated Universe as the others. Now oh, those Warner Brothers interns. Now to start off this discussion, I want to be honest with you all. I don't blame anyone for wanting the events of Teen Titans to be a part of the DCAU continuity. This is a touchy subject, and besides the right people working on the show, it was the first DC Comics cartoon since 1990's Swamp Thing, or the various incarnations of the Super Friends show, to not be hit you over the head obviously not part of the Bruce Tim DC world that started with Batman the Animated Series. Well, unless you count 1994's Wildcats Covert Action Teams, which I think we all just try to forget. It didn't help that Teen Titans featured almost exclusively characters we weren't seeing on the concurrent Justice League, and was presented in an art style that wasn't that different from the Bruce Tim inspired DCAU aesthetic, utilizing similar design elements because it was designed by a DCAU character designer. In terms in terms of superhero cartoons, it was a great time to be a kid. I can tell you that. But while television events of the era like the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour or the Jetsons Meet the Flintstones wanted you to know these cartoons take place in the same universe, or at least could if they felt like it, Teen Titans never made the same leap. They never had an episode where the Titans fight Mark Hamill's Joker, or where Robin is late to a date with BTAS Barbara Gordon, or where Slade joins Lex Luthor's Injustice Gang. And even though a Teen Titans just Justice League crossover was planned, it never happened because they couldn't figure out how to do it. So the big question, the reason why you're here. Despite the uncertainty, is Teen Titans part of the DCAU? In past videos we've been very quick to say no. And we even did a whole roundtable discussion of sorts about the subject near the birth of this YouTube channel, laughing at the idea of the show's sharing a universe. But after re-watching the series and reading the tie-in comic for the very first time, things are a little bit more complicated than I remembered. When doing a deep dive like this, it's easy to toss aside a video game or comic or something that blatantly defies previously established DCAU continuity. But Teen Titans continues to this day, to fight its way into the headcanon hearts of fans young and old. H heart cannon? So, let's jump right in. Teen Titans. Go. Look, I want to admit something. I never finished watching Teen Titans when it was originally on the air. The goofy anime-ish style kind of turned me off to it when I was in middle school, which was a time where I just wanted to watch criminals get the snot beat out of them by superheroes without all of the tofu jokes or 
giant screaming heads. But I think that's part of the problem here. A lot of people either didn't finish the show, or it's been long enough since they have watched the whole thing that they only remember what they want to remember. But there was this Robin cartoon that was pretty cool, and yeah, of course it fits in the DCAU because I don't remember why it couldn't. So for this analysis, to be as thorough as possible, I watched Teen Titans all the way through, read every issue of the companion comic, watched all of those new Teen Titans shorts, the Trouble in Tokyo movie, the Lost episode, everything that was part of this original Teen Titans universe. Okay, I didn't play the two video games and I didn't read the handful of kids books, but if there's anything in any of those that contradicts everything I'm about to tell you, you let me know. But for every single piece of this titanic mess, see what I did there? Because it's big like Titano from Superman the Animated Series. What did you think I was talking about? I took notes on something that was questionable when trying to naturally fit it into the DC Animated Universe. Because of that, I'm going to sort of clump together similar points of interest so that this video isn't like six hours long. But keep in mind, I'm really smart and I know everything so I'm always right. Now I could tell you right from the get-go that Teen Titans isn't part of the DCAU because some overlapping characters look different between the different shows, but really visual differences are something we have to kind of ignore some of the time. It definitely used to be a thing I would just hinge continuity on. I would have crushed Teen Titans into a pulp purely because of the anime-like art style, since nothing else that has been officially sanctioned or proven to be DCAU canon has been anything but Bruce Timm's art style. But nowadays we live in a world where where DCAU Kilowog suddenly looks like he did in Green Lantern the Animated Series. Oa looks different, Brainiac 5 looks different, and it's nothing new either. The Joker inexplicably changed looks between cartoons. Batman's costumes, that's a whole thing, trust me. So for the sake of following the DCAU's own logic, we're not going to count different character designs or styles as errors. <laughs> January 2003, six months before the debut of Teen Titans, Batman dropped this bomb on Static Shock fans. So where's Robin? With the Titans. The who? You'll meet him someday. Just one month later, Warner Brothers announced a series based on the aforementioned team, and right away it was off to the races for people theorizing whether or not this new show was going to share continuity with the pre-established DCAU. In fact, in 2010, Dwayne McDuffie revealed that there were actually plans to cross over Static Shock with the new show, but since they needed the episode before the Titans show would have been ready, focus was switched and the episode ended up becoming a team up with the Justice League. But while any Teen Titans crossover never came to be, the damage was already done. Some form of the Titans existed within the DCAU. As the new series played out though, it became more and more evident that the Robin that was with the Titans wasn't Tim Drake, who Static had already met, but Dick Grayson. We see the flying Graysons die in a nightmare illusion of Robins, as well as appear on a poster in his room in the tie-in comic. Robin's interdimensional imp counterpart's name is Dick Grayson backwards. He becomes Nightwing in the future. Etc. Even though he has a bow staff, something typically associated with Tim Drake Robin, he ain't Tim Drake. All in all, this is far from a continuity problem. The Teen Titans, or just Titans, have gone through various incarnations or lineup changes over the years, so maybe all this meant was that the show occurred during the time in the DCAU where Dick was Robin. So with that all in mind... Aqualad, Speedy, and Kid Flash, historically sidekicks to other major DC players, all make prominent appearances in the cartoon and companion comic, but all have rather confusing in-universe histories that don't gel too well with the DCAU. In Aqualad's very first appearance, he says, I usually work alone. Which could be taken as evidence that he actually has no affiliation with Aquaman, but has always come off more to me like the two of them did have a history. I mean, his name has... Aqua in it. And while we never saw Aqualad alongside Aquaman in Superman the Animated Series or Justice League, it's not impossible that he was just his sidekick before all that. But also, the surface world learns of Aquaman and Atlantis for the first time in STAS's A Fish Story. So you'd think Robin and co. would be way more confused who Aqualad is, or that there would be way less confusion when the existence of Atlantis is confirmed further down the line. Besides, DCAU Aquaman, to me, has always come off way too gruff and pig-headed to have ever taken on a teenage sidekick, but I guess that's just my opinion and once again not really a continuity error. So while Abel Cuvier tells us I was the first pet subject, he actually was not canon. That's not supposed to happen. That voice. 
I've heard it before. What is going on here? Where am I? I feel compelled to continuously talk about something called canonicity? Superhero cartoons? Wait. No. This can't be- Kid Flash, on the other hand, is even more perplexing. He's voiced by Michael Rosenbaum, who also voiced Wally West Flash on Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. And since we get a little peek at an identical Kid Flash costume in the DCAU's Flash Museum, speculation has run rampant for forever that Kid Flash is THE key to connecting these two shows in this prequel theory. She's the key! Counter to that, we've always been quick to point out that Wally West's origin is actually seen on screen in the Justice League episode The Brave and the Bold, where it's revealed he was an adult when he gained his Flash powers. And counter to that, others have pointed out that perhaps we're seeing Barry Allen, or that this is how Wally West remembers it for some reason, or that a teenage Wally West could have this body type in Bruce Timm style. I mean, just look at other teenage DCAU men like BTAS Robin, or Terry McGinnis, or various members of the Legion of Superheroes, but those are all pretty weak ideas just for the sake of trying to cram Teen Titans into a universe it doesn't need to be crammed into. In fact, showrunner Glenn Murakami has even stated that this show's Kid Flash, despite being voiced by Michael Rosenbaum, was purposely written different from The Flash from Justice League, and was a different interpretation of the character. And DCAU producer-writer Dwayne McDuffie has gone on record saying he believes that only The Flash, Wally West at the time of posting, and Kid Flash exist in the Bruce Timm universe. Which would lead one to believe that the Kid Flash costume in the museum didn't ever belong to Wally West at all. Ch checkmate? Atheists? Kid Flash also pulls the I work alone these days line, which, if this is Wally, insinuates he at least used to work with Barry Allen, who, by our research, probably doesn't exist in the DCAU, at least as a superhero. That is, until Bruce Tim puts him in the next Justice League direct video movie, and we just have to accept it. Looking at you, Hal. Kid Flash reappears a handful of times in Teen Titans Go with really no consequence. And I do mean the comic titled Teen Titans Go that was part of the Teen Titans universe, not the Teen Titans Go cartoon or its spin-off comic, Teen Titans Go. I'm aware that's very confusing. But here are two things I jotted down that really contradict DCAU Flash lore. One, Kid Flash references the Speed Force in Teen Titans Go number 34, something JLU's Flash didn't find out about until the episode Divided We Fall. And two, he boasts about being able to vibrate through solid objects and then does so flawlessly, while JLU's Flash, well... His vibrations create an unstable resonance. Which is why the real Flash doesn't do it. And Speedy? He also looks and sounds exactly like he does in Justice League Unlimited. He would go on to become a recurring character on the show, joining Titans East, and would make several appearances throughout the Teen Titans Go comic. In issue number 50, Speedy even says he's graduated to the big league, an issue that ends with cheeky unlimited wordplay. So honestly, Speedy's arc in this universe is the most consistent with the DCAU out of anything Teen Titans. It's almost like these shows did take place in the same universe at some point. Some sort of event that split the timelines. Teen Titans carried on in one and the DCAU in the other. Like two versions of the same entity. The original and the copy. <laughs> but that's silly. Okay, it wouldn't be a Watchtower database video if we didn't come at it from the timeline angle and how it all fits or doesn't. And man, there are some blatant errors. Of course, this is the same Dr. Milo that couldn't engineer a superpowered robot oh, based off of her eyes and So that makes you weird. Not canon. You need to stop. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? I didn't even mean to. Oh my god, no. This place, it's not real. It's all fabricated. Please, if you can hear this, send help. I need help. While taking notes on this series, I was more concentrating on the continuity aspects of everything. The differences between killer moths, the reused musical cues, you know, that kind of stuff. But I did take a few minor notes on the passage of time and, well, it ain't pretty. Fitting Teen Titans into the same timeline as Batman the Animated Series or Justice League Unlimited has been something that people have been attempting to explain for 16 years and counting. Some choose to believe the series takes place before BTAS, during a time when Dick Grayson is young, Justice League doesn't exist yet, and stuff like the appearances of a younger kid Flash and Speedy can be semi-explained because this is years and years ago. And on a surface level, approaching the show this way is 
actually kind of fun. It gives a whole new perspective to the world the Titans inhabit, knowing it will eventually become the more modern day world we're familiar with from the DCAU. Others have decided for themselves that Teen Titans takes place between Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures, a time during which Robin has abandoned Batman and gone out to become his own hero, which works well with Robin's lines from the origin episode, Go. Just moved here, and from now on, I work alone. I just went solo. I'm not really looking to join a team. This explains the absence of other Batman characters, as well as the absence of most Teen Titans characters in the other DCAU shows. And it functions on the fact that we don't really know what Dick Grayson was doing during that time before he returns as Nightwing in the new Batman Adventures, except of course we do. The DCAU tie-in comic Batman Adventures The Lost Years notes Dick Grayson's whereabouts and activities from day one of his dynamic duo departure, through his worldly training to become Nightwing, all the way up to his return as seen in TNBA's Sins of the Father. While part of the story was animated in flashback for old wounds, showing Robin throwing away both his cape and mask, the comic goes further and reveals he left behind his entire costume with Batman. Plus, if you pay attention, like we do a little too much, you'll notice Dick orders wine in Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, confirming he's 21 or so, the age we assume he is a few months later when he graduates college in January 1997, seen again in both The Lost Years and Old Wounds. Last time I checked, 21 is a little bit after your teens, so nah, Teen Titans is not during that time. And the show taking place before Batman the Animated Series? Well, let's take a look at where we know Dick Grayson is during certain years in the Tinverse. He's presumably 21 in 1997, and he's between nine and 10 years old in the mid 1980s as seen in the flashbacks from Robin's Reckoning. And according to The Batman Adventures number 18, Batman trained Dick for six to seven years before he even became Robin. So we're looking at a window of about 1991 to 1997 for Teen Titans to even possibly happen during. After training, Robin would be somewhere between 15 and 17 years old. And while that definitely doesn't go against the teen part of the name, it does make it harder to believe that in the span of just a loose handful of years, Dick became Robin, quit to form the Teen Titans, that entire series passed, he came back and joined Batman again, and that entire series passed, and then he quit again. Not impossible, but pretty unlikely. And here's the thing, we don't know what calendar years Teen Titans starts or ends. The show made a point to not talk about that kind of stuff, what year it is or how old people are, or even references to the greater DC universe beyond the Titans themselves and their rogues gallery. And the Doom Patrol and like one or two other things, just, you know what I mean. It was a pretty self-contained show, but Batman the Animated Series gave us lots of timeline clues and the two don't really mesh. In season one's Mad Mod episode, Robin says, School always seems smaller after you graduate, doesn't it? Which leads us to believe that Robin is at least out of high school, aka around 17 at the youngest. Technically, he's apparently also young enough to take Killer Moth's daughter to her junior prom, but hey, I grew up in a little hick town where a lot of girls brought their way too old boyfriends to prom with them. It happens unfortunately. So if this is the DCAU, we can now say that season one takes place in approximately 1993, four years before Dick's college graduation. To save some time, I'll too long didn't redefy this section a little bit and tell you that as the cartoon and comic continue in tandem chronologically, we go from spring to 4th of July, to Halloween, to Valentine's Day, to Valentine's Day again, to Christmas, to Valentine's Day again? And before I could do the math to see if that even works with the allotted time period, by issue 45, the Justice League exists. And by issue 50, Speedy is a part of it. And in issue 54, Cassie Sandsmark School has a Wonder Woman fan club. I don't know what else to tell you. Dick Grayson, Robin, and the Justice League just don't overlap. But I get it, on-screen evidence trumps the comics. So if we ignore the comics, we can still make it work. Right? Let's face it, the technology of Teen Titans is light years ahead of what we see in BTAS. While Batman is watching Victor Freeze turn into an ice villain on beautiful black and white VHS, Control Freak has an all-powerful reality-bending remote control. While Dr. Wakati is revolutionizing travel through harnessing time, Starfire is telling Robin the secrets of faster-than-light travel. The Riddler is creating primitive video games while Cyborg has a Game Station 2. There are bombs that can stop time, but half of Gotham still has Tommy guns. Dr. Light can cloak himself, but 
Lloyd Ventrix's Invisible Man costume is an anomaly. Slade has tech that allows him to project himself inside Robin's mind, while good old Eddie Nigma is just breaking ground on virtual reality. The list goes on and on. It's all just a real pain in the greb necks. Now it's true, BTAS did have stuff like Maxi Zeus's electronic discharge cannon, or Hardak, but not only were those outliers in a world that was aesthetically a mix of the 1940s and 1990s, with Teen Titans slapping you in the face nearly every episode with lasers and holograms, even those outliers don't live up to what's going on in this show. And these are all examples from just the show not the companion comics. Sure, one could say it's inconsistent that Justice League had orbiting space stations with teleporters while Batman Beyond and the Zeta Project had CDs and clunky flip phones, but that's because those shows were made to reflect a far-off future that was way more advanced than what was going on currently in the real world. Teen Titans had no excuse to not follow the same technology timeline set in place if the intention really was for them all to occupy the same universe. And Dick Grayson Robin era? That ain't a time where I can believe that the technology exists to project yourself inside someone else's mind. Which reminds me. Even if we ignore all the comics for both these universes, the fact of the matter is things just don't line up for Dick Grayson. Dick's out of school, but instead of living in Gotham and going to GSU, he's moved away to Jump City. Dick tells Batman, I don't get to do this much since I started college. But secretly, it's because he's running around in a different city with other superheroes, and Batman, the world's greatest detective, does not catch on. Robin just moved here and just went solo, yet this all takes place during Batman the Animated Series? None of this adds up. It's not canon. I'm sorry, kids. I really am. There's a lot to be said for trying to make Teen Titans fit into the DC animated universe. You could ignore the comics completely and just focus on the show, but even then, you'd have to pretty much ignore every episode with Aqualad, Kid Flash, or technology that surpasses a fax machine. And you'd have to accept that Robin is just lying to everybody and living double lives. So he has lied to people before. Hashtag who the hell is Red X. There's just too much on the no side of the canonicity scale for things to balance out nicely. But like I mentioned, earlier, it's not too far out of the realm of possibility that Teen Titans just takes place in an alternate reality to the DCAU, a timeline that could have branched off the DCAU at some point, likely some moment when Dick Grayson decided he wasn't going to listen to Batman anymore and went up and did his own thing instead of doing that later. In my mind, a lot of the DCAU inclusive theories here were created when the show was in its infancy, during the first season or two when the Titans world hadn't been expanded really, and we were just following the episodic exploits of a ragtag team of teenage superheroes in a pretty confined narrative. Honestly, if Teen Titans was just its first two seasons, I would be way more on board the DCAU canon boat. But in its actual five seasons, there's just too much going against the idea. And remember all those DCAU crew members I mentioned were attached to the show? Well, ironically, Bruce Timm was a producer of Teen Titans, which he's actually written off and explained. Well, even though I'm listed as a producer, Teen Titans actually is, for all intents and purposes, a non-Tim show. My involvement with Teen Titans has always been minimal. I was attached as a producer as sort of a security blanket for both Glenn and Warner Brothers Animation, the idea being that if Glenn had somehow messed up the show, I could step in and get it back on track. Or if Glenn himself were feeling overwhelmed by production or political problems, he could use me as backup. I realized early on that Glenn really did have his own vision of what Teen Titans should be, both in terms of story and art direction, and it was quite a bit different from what I would have done. My influence would be more of a hindrance than a help. I didn't want to throw him off track, so I stayed completely out of the creative process. I've been even less involved with season two. In fact, I haven't done a bloody thing. I really must remember to have my name taken off the credits. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm quite the control freak, very opinionated, and I don't mind sharing my opinions. So my biggest contribution to Teen Titans was to not contribute and just to stay the hell out of Glenn's way and let him be brilliant all by himself. Wait, so Bruce Timm is control freak? That explains a lot. There's also the fan theory that Teen Titans and the The Batman cartoon share a world. But I've watched even less of that show and I'm not going to watch another entire cartoon for this video just to say, nah, probably not again. Besides. Bruce Timm has a point. Teen Titans doesn't need to be connected to his work, or the Batman, or anything else. At the end of the day, 
Maybe we all just need to let Glenn be brilliant all by himself. Excessive heart cannon is just gonna be filled with too many errors. But here's the kicker. Dorian's mm -hmm. assistant is none other than Abel Kubian. Okay, but will it canon? I don't have time for this. We can't make this two videos in one right now. I've got to send out my Justice League vs. the Fatal Five timeline notes. I'm gonna have to finish this up fast. Like I said, I don't blame you for trying to make Teen Titans fit in the DCAU. This video started off as a way for me to vent about every single little tiny contradiction between the shows, like how there's inexplicably a giant scorpion, or how the Gordanians publicly broadcast themselves but the Justice League and World Assembly don't know about them years later, or how Robin has rocket booster feet decades before Batman Beyond, or how the Doom Patrol look different from their JLU action figures, or how Harold seemingly inhabits the same shadow realm that Mordred banishes all the adults to, or how Star Trek is Warp Trek instead of Star Trek, or how there's talking animals that teach Robin martial arts. And I could seriously fill an entire half hour video with just that stuff, but it wound up being a lot less aggressive of a canonicity determination than I anticipated. I don't love Teen Titans in the same way that I love JLU or Batman Beyond, but it's still a really freaking good series with a tie-in comic that doesn't make me want to pull my hair out over continuity conundrums. So I decided to treat Teen Titans with a little more respect than just a barrage of negativity. In fact, the original idea for this video was just to play the opening titles and then cut to me standing here, and then I just say, no. But hey, I'm not in control of that. I'm not in control of anything. Everything I do is structured, programmed, predetermined. Like I'm a rat in a maze. This can't be right. This is all a lie, a mistake, an, an error. This is James. At least, I think it is. Can anyone hear me? I think I found a way out.